Hello all, Eric Hoxter back here again today and we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, we're going to continue doing this. Um, instead of me playing a game of rapid chess or watching me blunder away some blitz, I'm going to be showing some of the games that I did play where I was able to implement some of the lessons that I've learned. So these are going to be a lot of the novice lessons that go in through uh, the principles, how to uh, just simple piece development, how to see what's an advantage, what's not, how to create a plan, these things that help me uh, go on up through the ranks and it's going to show some of the things I did well and the things I did not so well that I, my opponent did well that still applies to the lesson. So the theme of this lesson is going to be about uh, some of the advantages um, that are important to look for in the middle game and I'm going to be talking about the Steinitz rule of uh, taking away squares from the opponent's knight, uh, giving a space advantage, and I think just good squares for your minor pieces is to be able to acknowledge when your minor piece is better than your opponent's and what you should do about it. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm playing the black pieces and as you can see I lost this game. Uh, I'm not ashamed to show my losses, it's totally fine. Uh, my opponent did some things so well I made a big mistake or a blunder uh, that you'll go ahead and see before I stop the game. So let's go ahead and go on forward. We have an advanced Karo Khan, it's one of my favorites. Um, I used to play Sicilian, I used to play the Sicilian Dragon, but I would hate all these uh, uh, minority attacks or whatever would happen, and they would push their pawns towards my uh, Castled King and my Fiat and Cutted Bishop here, uh, and it would be very uncomfortable for me. So I started playing the Karo Khan again, and I enjoy it. This, I think, wasn't a good move. Um, I think better would be to develop some pieces. Uh, and instead, this gets into my first part of the lesson, it talks about... Uh, having a space advantage and what it means to create bad squares. So by pushing this pawn forward two squares, you start to make this square weak, this square weak, this square weak and strong for me, this square is strong for me, uh, and then you, with pushing this pawn, you make this square weak for yourself. A uh, better move would be simply just develop a piece, develop a bishop, uh, develop your knights, you can put your bishop here, uh, anything. Uh, not making too many pawn moves. So with these weak squares you can go ahead and see uh, that a plan would be to go ahead and see if we can occupy that with a minor piece. So immediately I make the same mistake. Um, we both have about an equal space advantage quote unquote um, and I made it worse by um, by weakening this square for myself but I think I was thinking one of these squares are going to be useful for me. Um, one thing I was scared of was my opponent playing something like uh, b4 because usually what I do is after developing my bishop I bring my pawn out and if he plays b4 I'll have to push my pawn my bishop back and then his pawn goes forward and then my bishop is trapped uh, so instead I gave myself a flight square and I was looking forward to uh, seeing what I can do about these weak squares he develops his knight and then immediately my eyes go towards uh, this weak square here and I'm not sure if he'd ever be able to make use of it, but it's definitely in my uh, in the back of my head. And again, like I said, I push my pawn. If he trades bishops, I want to be traded on uh, on my terms because I think my knight would be pretty decent here, especially with this pawn forward. Um, he can't really push this pawn because I can go ahead and uh, take it for now. But I don't want to just go ahead and take his bishop and allow him to develop his queen or something like that. Um, and this is, even though my bishop's outside the pawn chain, I still consider it bad, and I consider this a good bishop, if anything. So I'd be happy to trade it. These are awkward moves, but I had this plan in mind of uh, keeping my minor pieces uh, in the game and in the right spots eventually. He plays h3. I'm thinking he's going to play b4, but he couldn't play that right now. I simply develop my other knight. One thing I look for in the Karo Khan is uh, even though I play c6 in the beginning, um, I always anticipate this c5 push. And usually I bring my knight here, I have my bishop look out for uh, this square, and then I usually put my queen either here or here, uh, and, just, and just really look after c5. And since that's the overall plan of, uh, of breaking up the, the center here, that's, um, that's my big focus for the opening. And also since he created weaknesses, my big focus is on seeing how I can take advantage of uh, some of these squares here. 
he develops a knight. But you see, uh, again, going back to the Steiner's rule, he develops his knight. But his knight, whoops, his knight doesn't really have any good squares. Um, maybe here eventually they come into c5, which is good. But at the moment, my pawn is well placed. I develop my bishop. Uh, one thing I was considering was playing queen c7 right away and just going after c5. Um, one thing I didn't consider until after this game, um, again, it was a 15-5, so it was pretty rapid. Um, was seeing if I can go ahead and uh, check. I'd be giving away my my uh, my good bishop after knight takes, but queen takes check. Uh, he could push his pawn if he wants to, but he really just has to go ahead and move his king, and it just makes it awkward for him. So I'd be willing to give away my good my good bishop for that. He prepares to bring his knight into c5, and for whatever reason, I play c, uh, queen c7 here. I kind of get my plans mixed up, so it's a little bit of a uh, of a back and forth and it's not really productive I actually just lose the tempo here and I don't enjoy it uh, develop your bishop that's good instead I bring it back again I lose the tempo uh, but it's a rapid game so I kinda justify it that way even though I, I kinda smack myself for playing queen c7 um, anyway or even developing my bishop I should have just either played queen c7 with the attention of c5 or look to see how I could play on this side instead I'm kinda going back and forth here, not really establishing one plan over another. He jumps his knight into c5. I do the check that I wanted to do, but now with his bishop developed, he can block. But when he blocks, I can go ahead and uh, uh, see if I can take and start uh, doing what I want over here on the on the queen side because his bishop will no longer be uh, affecting these squares. So he blocks. I check, and again, I just want to go ahead and clear up some space. Um, if he blocks with a pawn, I might go ahead and uh, check again with my bishop and trade down pieces, and that's exactly what happened. So I give a check. He can't take with his queen. His queen is still defended, uh, unfortunately. But I take it, trade everything. And here, uh, materials equal. Right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, all the pawns, and just the knights. Now, if you look at the knights, uh, again, I'm still focusing on these bad squares for my opponent. I have a decent space advantage uh, here, and I'm still focusing on getting my knight to a good square. Seeing that his knight's not so good, I think I have a little bit of an advantage here, and that's something. These small advantages are what really count uh, when it comes to to uh, getting to higher levels of play. I have uh, both my center pawns where he doesn't have any. I think I have a little bit of a space advantage. My king's in a better spot even though we're getting into an end game. I still want to get my king protected. King's not really that protected and my pieces are coming into his territory pretty quick. So I continue with my plan to attack the weak squares. I bring my knight in there. And here's, and here's where I start to go wrong. Um, he brings his, his rook into the center which is totally fine. Uh, it was kind of just something you wanted to do. It's being attacked. Where are you going to move it? Here, I have a few different plans. I want to go ahead and castle. I want to go ahead and do this rook lift, which I obviously do, um, and go ahead and attack this pawn. Uh, but one thing you want to realize is when you have a knight on an outpost like this, you need to have a square that's going to be really anchored down um, and pay attention to that square. So he brings his knight out attacking this pawn, but it's defended. And my first big mistake, what do I do? I focus on my attacking my opponent's pawn and make a big mistake. It's a big blunder. And I smack myself right afterwards. I, I literally smack myself. It's, you know, it's pretty funny. But I uh, smack myself right afterwards. He takes away the anchor to my knight, making an attack by, by, uh, by his king. I can't really take... Hmm... Yeah, I can't, I can't really take here, because then he just takes my knight, and I can't take his knight, so I, I'd just be down material. So instead, I just trade again. He takes with his rook. And then now I have uh, these passed pawns, or not passed pawns, excuse me, um, these connected pawns. No more, double, no more two pawns in the center. Uh, but you see now he has a big uh, awesome square for his rook. My pawns are 
doubled and not really doing anything. I can't really get my piece into the game. And I just think I'm at a complete loss here. I ended up bringing my king up. He brings his king inside. And I play my rook to d8. And I probably shouldn't trade in this position because I'm down a pawn. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 7. 4, 5, 6, 7, yeah. Yeah, I probably shouldn't trade my rooks in this position. Um, it's simply not good, but... Yeah, if it wasn't for that big mistake uh, here, my knight would have been on this outpost for a long time. I could have just... Better would have just been to castle and bring my rook over uh, and just really protect this pawn. Then I could end up playing something like rook f5 and keep this pawn protected. Uh, his rook can't come in to protect this pawn. And everything's just looking good for me with my knight. Um, just looking better than his. If he ends up bringing his knight down here, uh, I'm not sure. I maybe we'll just push my pawn. That way it's not attacked. And then, if well, if I trade, then he can go ahead and take uh, my e pawn. I'd figure something, but there's no real thrust. This is just small counterplay. Um, by the time he takes to kind of make these moves. I'll be making my threatening moves by attacking his king and bringing my my rooks into play. Uh, maybe looking to open the position up a bit. And my, my knight can go ahead and be in the center and he'll have to trade material um, if he wants to uh, have a chance of equalizing here. And then we can go ahead and fight for the uh, the d-file, which, which I think is just won by him. But either way, uh, the idea here is to just take a look at these small advantages, you know, having a decent pawn center, um, knowing your opponent has weak squares and just formulating your plan around those uh, those weaknesses or advantages. And it makes the game go a lot smoother. Um, you blunder less, unless you're me, and just totally forget about, you know, what's going on in the position. But, uh, yeah, it just makes chess a lot easier. And this is something that I've been learning and it's been making my rating go up. 15-28 um, on lead chess. Uh, my USCF rating is going up. I'm about to renew my membership and get back to playing some more over-the-board games. I don't think I'm going to be going over my over-the-board games. However, uh, well, we'll see. I might go over like a Saturday quad or two. Uh, or maybe my, the Delaware Open. I don't know. I, I'll have to decide that. But this really upset me because the game was equal. I knew at this point or a few moves beforehand that this was a good game to show for my first lesson. And then I make that move. But I still knew it was a good for my first lesson because it shows that I'm still a novice and that I still make those uh, bad decisions. Uh, so without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. I hope you enjoyed my first lesson, uh, which talks about the advantages of certain minor pieces, how to take advantage of your opponent's weaknesses, and how to develop a plan with those uh, advantages and weaknesses. And until next time, uh, be well, my friends. If you uh, enjoy, like, subscribe, share. Um, I have a few higher rated friends on that actually subscribe to me. So if you can go ahead and comment and either add on or adjust some of the things that I say, um, I, I greatly appreciate it. I greatly appreciate the feedback and criticism. And with that, uh, until next time.